and welcome to trace, track or conductor width calculation for a printed circuit board KiCad tutorial 1.12. Okay, so what we're particularly interested in is the current in the resistor R5 of 4 ohms, the load re uh, resistor, as that should be be the more or less the maximum current in in the circuit and we can do that by doing a simulation in LT spice and we click the run button and there we can see the red trace current in R5 which is as we can see, it settles around just above 810 milliamps. You can also read it right at the bottom of the screen in the lower left corner, the Y axis. Where it over here, I'm going to show you quickly. You can see Y is 11.92 volts, and uh, current is given as 830. 0.77 milliamps so okay we see that the <coughs> voltage increases up until here about 3.3 uh, volts and the, as the current it increases to about 842 or 860 one milliamps and then it sort of levels off and settles around uh, 830 milliamps but it will also be interesting to see what happens uh, this is after it settled but what happens before it settles and we can do that by looking at the current in the inductor and we just click, so, uh, click on the inductor and there we see it, there's the, let's make this a bit bigger. There we see the current in the inductor and we see it, oh goodness, well, let me just correct that, yeah. It shoots up initially, up until about just under 5 amps, and then it drops down again. And then it more or less settles around 820 milliamps over, over, over here. So there's a, br a brief spike before the output voltage, this the green trace, and the output current uh, settles. And we can also calculate the RMS value and the average current in the inductor. We do that by selecting current and then control click and the uh, LT Spice calculates the average current is 1.3719 amps and the RMS value of the current is 1.9488 amps and that's uh, during the first 100 microseconds or first millisecond. As discussed before, this video is based on a KiCad tutorial, in particular KiCad tutorial 1.12, trace, track and or conductor width calculation for a printed circuit board. I'll leave a a, I'll, I'll leave a copy of the link in the description below and now we have to calculate the trace width and there's a trace width calculator available from advanced circuits and we're going to use the as inputs uh, a current of 2 amps thickness of 1 ounce per square foot this is actually quite a curious measurement it is if you take an ounce of copper conductive material of which the trace is made and you roll it out into one square foot you get the thickness of the trace and we 
say we're going to tolerate a temperature rise of 10 degrees and an ambient temperature of 25 degrees and a trace width of one inch. And we, if we put this into the calculator of advanced circuits, and we can get there by clicking over here, and as you can see, I'll also leave a link in the description below for where you can find this calculator by advanced circuits. And we have a current of 2 amps, thickness of 1 ounce per square foot, temperature rise of 10 degrees Celsius, ambient temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, and we have a trace length of 1 inch. And then we see that for the external layers, uh, the required trace width is 30.8 moles. According to this website, advanced uh, circuits, they use this formula of, of area. They say first the area is calculated and uh, it is based on the recommendations of IPC 221. Now KiCad also has a trace width calculator built in. As I've said, KiCad also has a trace width calculator built in and you can access that calculator by clicking on this PCB calculator. I've already done that. If you click on it, then you this tab win, window click, uh, opens and you must click on the tag width and you enter the current of 2 amps, temperature rise, 10 degrees Celsius, conductor uh, length 1 inch. And they use the same formula as recommended by IPC 221. And as you can see, the external layers is 31.3 and the internal layers is 81.4, which is about the same as the uh, as what we got from the advanced circuits uh, calculator. Now, if you wonder where this, what this IPC 221 is about, I managed to obtain a copy of, of it, and it is actually a specification, as I obtained a copy of the IPC 221A, and it is an, a, a titled Generic Standard on Printed Board Design, and the copy I have is IPC 2221A. It was dated May 2003 and it supersedes IPC 2221, which was dated February 1998. If you go to page 40 of the specification, in, and in particular paragraph 2.6, conductive material requirement, requirements, it says the minimum width and thickness of conductors on the finished board shall be determined primarily on the basis of the current current capacity and the maximum permissible conductor temperature rise. The minimum conductor width and thickness shall be accordance with figure 6.4 for conductors on external and internal layers of the printed circuit board. Then it gives this formula and if you compare that formula used by advanced circuits and um, the keycap calculator, you'll see they are all in fact exactly the same. There it is, I equals K times delta T to the power of 0, 0,4 times. The only difference here, of course, is they split the area into width and height to the power of 0 0.7125. Now, if you look at the Figure 6.4 that I referred to, find it over here. And if you look at the current 2 amps, and that is a this particular curve is for 20 degrees Celsius, but even with 20 degrees uh, Celsius. We still end up at 30 moles, which is about correct, which is, is to be ex expected. So we can say that more or less the, the end result of a um, 
cross section in, in, in square mils of, of 30 mils corresponds to that as prescribed by IPC 2021. Okay, so now let's use a third tool. We click over here and it takes us, us to the Saturn PCP Design Incorporated website. I'll leave a link in the, to this website in the description below, but it features a very powerful PCB printed circuit board tool and you can click and download it by clicking over here. Uh, I'm not going to download it now, I've already done it. As I say, I've already done it and installed it, so I'm just going to open it. There we are. We click on the Conductor Properties tab, and we want to calculate the width. And we type in here 2 amps. 1000 volts for a length, PCB thickness 62, we choose 1 megahertz in DC, okay, but plating thickness, bare, 1 ounce, go to tools, we set program options, and we choose IPC 222A, you will see that this toolkit has a, um, also takes into account a, a, another specification, which is apparently a more conservative specification as far as current is concerned. In a printed circuit board, it uses the IPC2152 without modifiers and the IPC2152 with modifiers. So let's click close over here. And we say we want the temperature rise of 10 and we want. 25 ambient temperature and we say click solve and we get the usual 31.6 moles for 2 amps which is in line with the previous calculations uh, that we did. Okay so now let's try this with without modifiers and use this IPC2152 without modifiers and click close say 2 amps and temperature rise of 10, 25 ambient temp temperature and you can see the, if we click solve, we get a conductor width of 80.1736 moles. You can see this, the IPC2152 with modifiers is a lot more conservative. So, okay, so let's try this with two ounces. And even with two ounces, which is a, a thicker uh, base, we're still at 42.186 uh, moles. Uh, that is too wide. And the reason why I say that is if we look over here, If we look at our footprints and we measure it in, 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 in moles, just enlarge this a bit for you. You see this is about 22, 24 moles. So this is too wide. So we, we, we want to be around about 22 moles to be on the safe side as far as track width is, is, is concerned. And we can just do a, another measurement. Oh, sorry. Oh. Even more accurate. This one is... Oh, this one is about... 21.5, 22. We, yeah, so we want to be at, at 20, 22 moles, more or less, as far as track width is concerned. So let's try program options, IPC with modifiers. Select that. Just click OK. Click close. Yeah, and apparently. 
this tool works that um, now we can't calculate the um, uh, conductive width. This 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 is blanked out. But anyway, let's let's backtrack then and do it. Make it a temperature to rise from 12 volts and make this 22 volts. I've experimented, so <laughs> that's what you. Uh, it actually works. So let's click solve here. So you see for a conductor width of 22 uh, moles, you can carry, um, you, can, you can handle 2 amps. So at the end of the day, according to the IPC2152 width modifiers, we, we can uh, add a 2 ounce um, base copper weight with uh, zero plating thickness, uh, 22 moles. We can handle two amps, and that's it. Just want to do a um, comparison. Let me just check here between the. Uh, as you can see, I just want to show you that we chose IPC triple two one A to the similar calculation for two amps. Uh, like a temperature rise of 10 degrees, and be a temperature of 25, and we click solve. Oh wait, oh wait, we must prepare, and we make that two. There we are. So you can see, if we use the IPC triple two one modes uh, specification. For 2 amps, we only need 17.9 moles conductor width, which clearly indicates that the IPC2221 mode is a lot more forgiving as far as the um, conductance of, of current is, is concerned. The, it is clear that the IPC2152 is a lot more conservative. I think this is enough for now. Next time we will look at trace clearance and vias. I do provide links in the description below. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Please click on the subscribe button. Thank you for watching and goodbye.